Episode 30, Ray Tell Her the Truth. Jeff, thank you. You're a good person. Rose said as she smiled sinisterly and happily walked in front of Jeff, hanging her bag in his hand. Susan and Joe both frowned. They thought that Rose wanted Jeff to stay and spend time with her. They never thought that Rose only wanted him to hold her bag. Wasn't she making fun of him on purpose? Jeff wasn't as angry as Susan and the others. If he had to blame someone, then he had to blame himself for being too soft-hearted. He had thought for a moment that Rose might have changed her mood. Since he had already said he would stay, he decided he would join along. Rose, you're too smart. Hanging out in the amusement park will be tiring. We need a bag carrier. Ray said with a smile as he complimented her. Following Rose's example, he took off his backpack and walked toward Jeff. Bro. Thank you. You're great. Ray said as he went to give his bag to Jeff. Screw off. Jeff didn't even make a move. He just glared at Ray and cursed. Helping a girl with her bag was acceptable, but Ray was a man trying to shamelessly give Jeff his backpack. How shameless is he? Do you think I have no brains? Jeff thought. After being yelled at by Jeff, Ray became listless and walked away while muttering to himself. Ignore him. He's just an immoral person. Rose muttered as she glared at Jeff, then held Ray's arm and walked out of the coffee shop first. Jeff, Susan and the others followed behind as they walked out of the shop. A few boys walked past them who were laughing and talking. Rose's pupils constricted. As her gaze locked onto one of them, she shrieked. Bastard! Can't you see me? Her shout was extremely loud, scaring everyone within 10 meters of them. The other boys also stopped and turned to look at Rose. Rose's gaze was full of anger as she locked onto the face of the tallest boy among them. Rose, what happened with him? Ray asked Rose quietly. He's Anthony Brennan. That incident at our house last time was caused by this guy. Cold words flew out from Rose's mouth. The boys that followed Anthony saw Rose shouting at him. Anthony had an excellent family, so they usually fawned all over him. The boys were prepared to go over and teach Rose a lesson. However, Anthony extended his hand to stop them. Who would have thought at that moment Anthony's heart would fill with panic and fear? Last time, when Anthony let his father, Donald Brennan, pressure Rose's family, he thought that her family was just second rate. Once his father made a move, their family would not be able to hold on and would eventually send Rose obediently to his bed. Unexpectedly, Rose's family managed to invite the head of the New York Merchant Union, William Chase. Although Anthony's family's White Tiger Group was one of New York's top 10 enterprises, it was still under the protection of the Merchant Union. Therefore, Anthony's father humbly went to Rose's father's office and apologized in front of him. This was the most shameful and heartbreaking matter that they had ever experienced in their lives. Plus, the father and son duo were already extremely fearful of Rose's family. They would have to hide when they saw Rose in the future. Anthony walked in front of Rose with mixed feelings. The big, tall young man lowered his head toward Rose and said, Sorry, I was blind not to recognize you. Sorry if I've offended you. Please forgive my ignorance. Anthony's companions were greatly taken aback. What the hell? Does the usually unruly Anthony dare to speak soft words to someone? They thought. What made them even more dumbfounded was what happened afterwards. Rose proudly stood in front of Anthony with her arms folded and a faint near on her face. You think your apology is going to solve things? Aren't you thinking too optimistically? It's fine. I don't want to argue with you, but it's up to you and your attitude. Kneel in front of me now. Anthony's eyes twitched and his mouth quivered, but he didn't dare to disobey Rose. Under the watchful eyes of the crowd, Anthony dropped to his knees with a thump. Everyone stared at them in total confusion. Just what was going on? Anthony was the dignified young heir of the White Tiger Corporation. Why was he so afraid of this girl? Rose's heart began to swell. Rose, it's enough to punish him. Let's leave quickly. Ray said in a worried voice. He didn't help Rose with her problem, so if his lie was exposed, it would all be over for him. What are you leaving him for? My dear, this fellow has left our family in such a miserable state. How can we just let him go like this? Rose hugged Ray's arm and said, Now, you go beat him up. Ah, uh, you don't want to do this. Ray said, feeling guilty. What are you afraid of? We have a relationship with President Chase. 
Even if we lent him the courage, he wouldn't dare say a word. Rose urged. After being placed in such a spot, Ray had no choice but to fight. Ray hardened his heart and walked in front of Anthony. He raised his arm and slapped him a few times. So cool. Rose was so happy that she clapped. Then she walked in front of Anthony and gave him a few slaps too. All right, my dear. I'm so happy today. Don't let this trash disturb our fun any longer. Let's go. Rose chirped as she walked away with Ray in her arms, followed by Joe and Susan. Jeff, who was walking behind them, secretly shook his head. Rose had overdone it. Ray was too much of a show off. He wouldn't help them again in the future. If they stirred up trouble, they would be punished one day. Anthony, who was kneeling on the ground, looked at the backs of Rose and the others that were about to leave. You two, you just wait. He called. Jeff and the others called for a bus and headed straight for New York City's Entertainment Garden. On the way, Rose proudly told him how great it felt when she first hit Anthony, praising Ray for helping her. I've been looking for a boyfriend that can protect me and handle anything. Those poor losers better are more honest. Ha, this is hilarious. Listening to Rose's words, Ray felt rather weak in his heart, but Jeff just laughed it off. I wonder what Rose would think if she knew that I had helped her and not Ray. Jeff thought. After more than an hour of driving, they finally arrived at the amusement park. The roller coaster, the pirate ship, the galloping river, the merry-go-round, the jumping machine. After trying out all sorts of rides, it was already five in the afternoon. They took a taxi back to the city and had a meal. It was already dark, so Rose convinced everyone to go to the movies. After buying the tickets, Ray went to the bathroom as Rose got a call from her father. Rose, come home now. I'm going to visit Ray's father. After all. It's because of you that I have to see him. Dad, I can't go. I'll tell you a secret. Ray and I are in a relationship already. Besides, I'm with Ray right now. So even if I don't go, his dad won't say anything. Rose said. So, it's like that. Good girl. Ray's a potentially good one. Rose's father was very supportive of his daughter's relationship with Ray. All right then. I won't disturb your date with Ray anymore. It's done. They hung up the call. Rose, who called you? Ray asked when he came back. My dad, the movie is about to start. Let's go in quickly. Before Ray could ask, Rose had already dragged him in to watch the movie. When they came out after the movie, it was already past 10 o'clock. Ray suggested that they not go back to the university, but stay at a hotel instead. After the incident with Anthony, he wanted some private time with Rose as soon as possible. He would regret it if Rose knew the truth. It won't take long for us to take a taxi back home. Susan said hurriedly. She had a bad feeling about Ray's insistence on staying at a hotel. If you want to go back, that's fine. But I won't go back with Rose. Ray said as he put his arm round Rose's shoulders and leaned toward her. Rose, are you coming back with us? Susan asked Rose. Rose's heart was very conflicted, but she felt too embarrassed to go against Ray's words. I think I'd better go with Ray. You? Susan sighed. She knew that she would still worry about Rose. There was nothing she could do, so she decided to stay at the hotel. Ray searched for a luxury hotel on his phone and took a taxi there. The hotel was called the Berkeley, and it was quite luxurious. It had a one-meter-wide crystal chandelier, a golden interior and a tall and slender hostess. The hotel displayed its extraordinary quality from top to bottom. Give us three private rooms, make one of them a single, and the cheapest room. Ray commanded the young lady at the front desk as he walked up to her. Jeff, I'm very happy today. So I'll let you stay in a high-class hotel. Tonight you get to have an experience that I'm sure you won't have again in the future. Ray said to Jeff arrogantly while waiting for the receptionist to get a room. When the room card was ready, Ray pulled Rose by the hand and followed the bellhop to the room. Rose had never stayed in the same room with a boy before, so she was very nervous and blushed, but she still followed him. After all, Ray's family had so much power, so she wanted to develop their relationship. Joe and Susan went to their room. Jeff was the only one left in the lobby. The surrounding hotel staff started to whisper to each other. Some of them felt that Jeff looked very pitiful, 
as he was the only one among the friends who didn't have a girlfriend. He was also staying in the worst room. Jeff, on the other hand, didn't care about these questions. He was just thinking about whether he should tell Rose the truth. If Rose and Ray spent the night together, would he blame himself? He thought, a tall man wearing a white shirt, smoking jacket and black trousers entered the lobby. All the staff in the lobby stood up, looking more perked up than before, and focused their eyes on the man. Hello, manager. The staff bowed as the man passed. The man nodded in satisfaction. When his gaze focused on Jeff, his expression changed drastically. His original, relaxed expression changed to one of respect and surprise, just like the expression of the staff toward him. Sir, why are you here? The man said to Jeff with a smile. 